hello again uh, if you remember in the previous lecture we learned uh, a little bit about uh, basics of fractals we learned about uh, basic geometry different kind of symmetries in geometry and then we learned about uh, uh, the symmetry under magnification which was a new kind of symmetry for us and basically this symmetry under magnification was the basis of fractals what does that mean that means the things are self similar uh, at a given scale if the things are uh, they look like something then at a larger scale also they will look like themselves so that was that was a kind of self similarity so uh, and then we learned some basic fractals we learned some natural fractals uh, how they occur in nature we also learned some mathematical fractals like koch curve cantor set mandelbrot set uh, so a little bit about uh, several things we learned this uh, lecture i will also continue uh, initially about a, a bit about the same thing i'll give you some interesting examples of fractals in our daily lives uh, which we can uh, see so we we, we begin uh, with the, the fractals in the kitchen uh, in, in if you go to your kitchen you will find several uh, uh, things which are fractals so so one of the very basic example is a cauliflower uh, everybody has seen cauliflower didn't you yes you did uh, so uh, a cauliflower is a wonderful example of a natural fractal a, a small piece of cauliflower uh, looks like a whole cauliflower if you if you realize just imagine look take a small piece of cauliflower in your hand and a whole cauliflower in your hand if you take a close up picture it will all look like same pieces of the pieces look like the whole cauliflower and so on for several divisions like here is a picture of cauliflower and a piece broken from it so there 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 it is and a cauliflower and then uh, this is a whole cauliflower then you have a smaller cauliflower further smaller cauliflower a piece cauliflower but they all look same if you zoom into it the this this portion will look like this portion this portion so they will all be a, a, a it's, it's just like the same it's, it's a very good example of the self similarity now uh, another thing a, a pancake or an omelet or a, or a sort of a, a paratha in india so as we cook these things the batter which is boiling it forms bubbles of many different sizes on the on the on the pan in the pan it's if you look at this pan and this is the, the look at these bubbles these bubbles are there there are some big rings some more middle sized rings and more smaller rings so that is another property of the fractals you will see that uh, you have bigger structure than more middle sized structure of the same kind that even the number of these smaller as as you go at the smaller scale the number of these structures increase and so on so that's how you go as as you as it is cooking the the nature of the fractal nature of the pancake or the paratha or the omelet becomes more and more clear you see things are uh, taking shape here in 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 this uh, picture if you look at this picture you are taking shapes there and then if you look at this picture there are uh, different kind of bubbles are forming here some larger bubbles then smaller bubbles then many much more smaller bubbles so a cooking batter uh, will also form and everyday bread the, some breads are also natural fractals the dough of the bread when it rises the, the, when the yeast produces bubble of carbon dioxide it rises so the, it, these bubbles are produced within the dough and these bubbles are of different size when you when you bake the bread then you will have very some some smaller bubbles some middle size bubbles and very large bubbles sometimes large bubble so a bread dough is a sort of a foam and the bread is a foam which is baked in solid form so you you look at these uh, these are smaller holes in the bread these are some larger holes and so on so here in this picture uh, the, this in this picture the bread has been colored just to emphasize the size of the bubbles and you, you see the, this this texture this bubble texture will only come when the bread dough is not thoroughly kneaded 
if it is netted with the soft hands then it is this structure will come if you net the dough too much then it breaks up the larger bubbles and give the bread a much more uniform texture so you'll find in this your daily breads if you have a uniform texture that means the bread was uh, ned uh, the dough was ned a lot now uh, people ask several times people ask do fractals have practical applications it's okay that you are showing me the uh, the natural fractals either the cauliflower there are trees there are um, this uh, clouds and so on but what is the application of this uh, you know, fractals so if you remember the movie harry potter there was a invisibility cloak this guy harry potter used to wear and uh, got invisible so th that is uh, 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 one the, i think the name was uh, nathan cohen yeah yeah nathan cohen in 2012 he filed a patent for this and uh, he had a company called Factena uh, which has a which is a wide band microwave uh, which produced a wide band microwave invisibility cloak uh, which is essentially based on the fractal antenna geometry and uh, here is the design of this uh, uh, cloak and uh, within if, if you look inside this here uh, if you put put, a, put an object inside this uh, cloak, then the things will be invisible to the eye. What do you, what do you mean by invisible to the eye? How do you see things? You see things when uh, the, the, the light wave, suppose, uh, how are you seeing me? The light waves are uh, coming to me, they are obstructed by me, and they are go uh, they're not going to the further side, to, the, to, to my opposite side. So these light waves which are coming here, they are blocked by me. And that's how my image is produced in your eyes. So that is how you see an image. Suppose these light waves are not blocked by my body, then you will not see my body. You will just see the light waves coming through my body and you will see the light only, not my body. So that's the principle of that. And, and people, the Nathan Kehan has uh, uh, invented this invisibility cloak. And the basic design, something like that. The, this antenna consists of an inner ring where you see this uh, black ring the, which is called the boundary layer that which prevents the microwaves from being transmitted across the side of this ring and this is the region with the, that will be invisible to the outside observers this black region now surrounding the boundary layer there are six concentric rings if you see these these rings here let me get my pointer if you see these rings here these concentric rings here then you will uh, observe that you see these rings here these rings these rings are the concentric rings which guides microwaves around the boundary layer the shape the, you see this is my i'll show you a, a zoom uh, in picture of uh, this particular ring the shape of these uh, structures are fractals and they are so designed that uh, uh, the microwaves striking here they will reassemble themselves at the antipodal point so whatever comes here it will look exactly same at this point so whatever is within these rings it will be invisible to the eye so uh, to, they, they will always reconvert at the point which is antipodal to where they entered the globe so this design is a fractal design uh, here you see these uh, inner rings and these uh, the the side rings and you see the fractal nature of the designs so on the left is a magnification of is one of the outer rings of the cloak and on the right is the boundary layer fractal which you saw in this 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 boundary layer fractal this one and these are the concentric rings so uh, here if fabricated at the sub micron scale uh, right now it is a millimeter scale so it can only uh, make smaller things invisible but if you make this at a sub micron scale then this technology should act as a optical invisibility clock right now it is a microwave invisibility clock but this with the same principle will apply to an optical invisibility clock and it, in late uh, uh, august 2012 almost eight years back the cohen's group cloaked a person so uh, yeah this is a very interesting stuff
uh, and uh, here is the site where you will you can find the details about that www.fractina.com and uh, I think all of you should uh, go to this site and look at this interesting stuff. Now, uh, uh, these are some smaller uh, examples of fractals. We'll go to a little bit of uh, theory now. We'll understand how uh, plane, planar transformations will take place. How do you uh, produce fractals and so on? So before that, we have to learn a few things. But we, so uh, before going that, uh, we, we just I want to give you a break and I think a little bit about uh, different things. So there's a, this is a famous saying by Steve Jobs. It may not be directly related to this particular. Uh, video or in this particular course but yes this will be useful for your life uh, what steve jobs has said i think everybody knows who steve jobs was uh, he said your time is limited so don't waste it living somebody else's life all of us are uh, looking for somebody else's life so i want to become like him or i want to become like him and so on so don't be trapped by dogma which is living with the results of other people's thinking don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow, this, your heart and intuition somehow already know what you truly want to become. So don't be uh, don't, don't 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 get suppressed by other people's opinions, other people's uh, advices. Just do the right thing, what you think what is right. Okay, let's get down to work. So, uh, we already learned to grow factor. Uh, we, we, in this course, now, further, we will learn to grow uh, how to uh, grow fractal image and uh, images. And But first of all, we must build up the theory behind that or the mechanics of plane transformations. So first, we, we would like to discuss the geometry of plane transformations first, which is the mechanics of transformations, which will produce more general fractals through a, a procedure called iterated function systems. Now you look at this word, iterated function systems. So basically this will be a system, all of you know what systems are, which is governed by a function and which is iterated over time. So it's a very simple thing to understand. IFS is an iterated function system, a system governed by a function iterated over time. So to generate all uh, fractals or the very, the very simple fractals, we need to understand the geometry of plane transformation. What are plane transformations? So we describe some uh, basic features of plane transformations in this particular lecture. So we first we look for affine transformations, uh, the transformation which has affinity to each other. So affine transformations of plane which are composed of uh, four things, uh, scalings, uh, reflections, rotations and translations. We look at them one by one. First of all, scalings. What are scalings? Uh, uh, I took a smaller, a, a very very simple example but uh, which, which should be illustrative for how scalings work. Let's say the scaling factor in the x direction is denoted by r. This is an object in x direction and y direction. And the scaling factor in the y direction is s, denoted by s. So presently r is 1, s is 1. So there is no scaling. This is the original size of this particular object. And these two are x and y axis respectively. So if we assume that there are no rotations, then uh, basically, if R is equal to S, then the transformation is called a similarity transformation. That means, in, if, in, if in the both the directions, X direction as well as Y direction, if you have the same transformation, same sort of, uh, you can say, uh, magnification or uh, demagnification, but the value of magnification or demagnification in the X direction and the Y direction are same, then this is called a similarity. Like uh, here, like you, you see here, R is 0.75, S is also 0.75, so this is a, a similarity. Otherwise, if R is not equal to S, then it is called an affinity. It's called an affine transformation. 
So I find transformation where uh, the value of uh, the transformation in x direction is not same as y direction. That is called an affine transformation. Like in this example, uh, from R1 S1, you reduce R in the x direction, you reduce the object uh, by three fourth of its size. And in the y direction, we reduce the object at half of its size, S is 0 0.5. So that's what we did and so these are the basic definitions of similarity and affinity now scalings uh, now the scalings are also by default considered towards the origin so when you say r is 0.75 you reduce the object towards the origin s is 0 0.5 you reduce the object towards the origin so the origin is called the fixed point of all scalings so everything all scalings are done with respect to the origin now after scaling the next uh, property is called reflections now uh, these are again easy very easy to understand if you have negative values r then if r is negative then the object is reflected across the y axis because r is negative so everything goes this side uh, the object becomes like that where r is minus 1 s there is no reflection for s so s remains same object the size of the object remains same but because of this minor negative sign uh, the it gets reflected uh, across the y axis and uh, uh, looks like that if negative s is there then the object will look like this which is very straightforward to understand in this case s becomes negative one so this uh, gets transformed to uh, this particular object the object looks very very uh, similar but reflected across the x-axis now if you reflect across both x and y axis that is equivalent of, of uh, to if you say r is minus 1 s is also minus 1 that is equivalent to a rotation of the object by 180 degree about the origin so you see a lot of rotations can be represented by reflections a lot of reflections can be represented by rotation and so on so there, there is a uh, trade-off between these uh, so, so the next thing is rotation when you rotate an object through an angle so angle again you can rotate the all the objects parallel to x-axis by a certain angle then that angle is called theta if you rotate all the the, the uh, objects all the lines parallel to the y-axis uh, uh, so theta is 30 here so you rotate with respect to x-axis the so angle theta measures rotations of horizontal lines and angle phi measures rotation of vertical lines so again very straightforward simple thing uh, so that is the rotation of vertical lines here phi is 30 so the the thing becomes skewed in this direction if when theta is 30 things become skewed in the this direction now if you have condition theta equals to phi then that is sort of a rigid body rotation where the uh, things do not change their shape but the as a whole they are rotated so in this case theta is uh, 30 phi is also 30 so this whole object is being rotated just without changing its shape so positive angles are always taken as convention as the counterclockwise in the anti-clockwise direction we consider angles as positive ones now the, uh, the fourth one is the fourth kind of uh, scaling is the translation the, the transformation the, the translation means you move the object in certain direction and there are again two more parameters are there uh, e and f e is a translation in the x direction e is translation in this direction f is a translation in this direction in the y direction so here you see f is 0 there is no translation in this direction but e is 0.5 of the original size so we move the object half of the distance as uh, denoted by its length similarly f is denotes the translation in the y direction so we have six parameters now r s theta phi e and f r and s represents scalings and reflections theta and phi represent rotation and e and f represent translations in x and y direction so all of these can be uh, uh, can be combined into a single matrix equation 
So suppose we have this xy as original uh, uh, object, the new xy, the, the, the xy will transform to r cos theta minus sin phi s sin phi r sin theta s cos phi multiplied by this uh, the, the vector xy plus the translational component e and f. So matrix formulation of an affine transformation which involves scaling by r in the x direction, scaling by s in the y direction, rotation by theta and phi and translation by e and f respectively. So that is how you represent that mathematically. So how do we adopt to this convention if so when you are given some rules the values of r, s, theta, phi, e and f and you apply them iteratively over an object you will get a fractal object ultimately. So that is what uh, we would like to uh, see in the next few lectures. So the, this order the scalings are carried out first then reflections are carried out, then rotations are carried out and in the end translations are carried out. This is the usual convention we take and this order is automatically imposed by this matrix equation, matrix formulation. So emphasizing this order, so we again say if you are given R as theta phi and E and F values of any transformation, you can, you will be able to produce a fractal object. So the, these transformations are always encoded in the tables of this particular form. So I think uh, we should stop uh, here today. So you should go through this lecture and see what uh, more you want to learn. Uh, put your questions in the comments box below and I will try to answer all those comments uh, as soon as you put them in. Thank you. So in the end, I will just say uh, with this encoding of transformations of the plane, we can make factors using a method called iterated function systems IFS, which I already explained you earlier, which we will learn in the next class or the next lecture. Thanks.